Oh, no. No, man. Ah, did you see the size of that fish? No. Oh, man. I almost jumped in the creek for that sucker. Gosh darn it. Stories usually start at the beginning, employing words like once upon a time or a long time ago. This story is no different, except for the timing at which it enters my story. At the time, I was deep in the middle of my investigations into the golden trout complex, when, as it usually happens, the frayed end of a thread appeared. It appeared in the form of a name, a name that sparked a feeling of the divine. And as if guided by forces outside of my control, I reached for the thread and pulled. What began unraveling was an origin story about how the most beautiful of all trouts came to be in a small isolated creek on the side of one of the tallest mountain ranges in the United States. This divine name was the Sheep Heaven Creek Red Band. And this is my attempt at telling its story. All right. So I walked over there and I had a small ant pattern on. Well, we're, we're up here sh uh, fishing for Sheep Haven Creek Red Bands right now in case I hadn't uh, in case I haven't done the intro, I don't know exactly where I'm at. It's it's raining like crazy out here, but I have a, a small uh, ant dabbed ant a tractor pattern. Uh, it was dubbed with like a, a, a rainbow dubbing, and so I'm dropping it in there. And they're not surface feeding right now because it's it, it's cold enough too, but it's raining so bad. But as soon as that ant pattern started um, sinking just a little bit, I saw one come out of the depths and chase after it a little bit so I came back to the car really quick uh, grab my camera and that stuff and I'm gonna tie on uh, some sort of like a probably a, a zebra head midge or, or a zebra midge or something like that something with a with a bead head on it to, to drop down there and go try it again we'll see if we can catch a sheep haven sheep haven creek red band trout see ya about to try a rainbow warrior. That's pretty colorful. One and two. bead head so hopefully we'll get down a little bit lower but I feel like whispering for some reason we're in the middle of this campground here and it's rainy and quiet and I don't know it's just a it's probably the time when you need to be curled up next to the fire at home with a hot cup of chocolate or coffee or something but said I'm out here in the middle of nowhere chasing chasing trout so let's go try to get one. The Sheep Heaven Creek Red Band Trout was first reported as a Southern Sierra Golden Trout by Wales in 1939. Benke believed that the tiny isolated Sheep Heaven Creek hosts the purest population of the most primitive living form of rainbow trout in existence. In his 1992 monograph, Native Trout of Western North America, he hypothesized that the Sheep Heaven Creek Red Band best represents the first trout to become established in the upper Kern River drainage. This was made possible by occasional historic connections to the San Joaquin drainage via Lake Tulare. The South Fork of the Kern and Golden Trout Creek are the most isolated sections of the upper Kern River drainage. It is assumed that these areas were less impacted by later invasions due to additional barriers which help give rise to the extreme coloration and characteristics of the California Golden Trout. 
Sheep Heaven Creek is closed to fishing. However, there are a handful of creeks that were stocked with Sheep Heaven Red Bands in the 70s. Although there is debate over the genetic purity of these refuge populations due to a number of factors, including one, the possibility that these creeks were not completely fishless before stocking, two, the possibility of undocumented introduction of hatchery rainbows, or three, the theory I find most fascinating is something called a founder effect, which is thought to occur when a small group is removed from the main population in an effort to establish a new population. The newly established group only contains the genotypes and physical traits from the small group of individuals and not the main population as a whole. This results in Holy genetic drift cow, look at that. and can lead to the oh, emergence man. of a new species. All of this is somewhat down in the weeds for our purposes. For today, we find ourselves in the rain, on a creek, full of trout, oh my with God. ties to an ancient ancestor. So beautiful. Wow, there's a red band. Alright, let's see if we can get a good release here. Oh my gosh, you have no idea how far I traveled to catch that little red band. Something like that, exact thing swam up into the Sacramento River, into the Kern River, um, when they were all connected. It's an ancient relic trout, and that's what gave rise to, to the California golden trout up in the Kern that we've been, been going after for all these years. So it just, gosh, man, super surreal moment to finally be up here, and I feel like I'm closing the loop. A fish like that is where it all began. Kind of crazy. It was like they they like like a jigging action. I just drop it in there, jig it a couple of times, and, and get them. So I'm gonna try to catch another one really quick. See if I can get it get a little bit better video. Ah, still whispering. Gosh, it just feels like I need to be whispering right now. But I can, seriously, extremely excited. <laughs> I'm gonna probably go down in here on these rocks and try to drop it in just a few more places. I'll we'll probably call it. I want to take a minute and share with you a great book I read a few years ago on this topic titled The Search for Sheep Heaven Trout by Russell Hill. In the book, the author goes over his two year journey trying to find Sheep Heaven Creek. His search includes multiple impulsive trips on various logging roads, following hand-drawn maps, studying topos, coming to terms with his life and the changes in the world around him. It is out of print and a little difficult to find, but it's a rare treasure for those of us who enjoy the search for heritage trout. analysis this appears to be the fatal flaw in my attempt at landing this fish. The rainbow warrior pattern was doing its job of attracting quick aggressive strikes but the cheap hooks I supplemented in the recipe did not hold up to snagging on a branch. I was wet and cold and so I attempted to quickly close the hook gap and try again.
Ow! No! No! Man! Ah! Did you see the size of that fish? No! No! Oh, man! I almost jumped in the creek for that sucker. Gosh darn it! <laughs> that was a good sized freaking McLeod Red Band, Sheep Haven Red Band. Dang it! <laughs> At this point, I would like to add to our story by including some of the hurdles that were going on in the background of this trip. We had been caught in the rain for two days. During this time, our teardrop trailer developed a leak, which resulted in our mattress, clothing, and other vulnerable gear becoming completely soaked. With refuge in the form of our vehicle and rooftop tent, I knew we would be all right, but we were in for a very uncomfortable night. Freaking Mr. Mitt. He hit two more times. Then on the third time, missed him again. Gosh dang it, that's a big freaking fish. Ah. Alright, here's the deal. I've snagged that thing like three or four times. I've lost count. Um, I came back, got a little bit bigger rod. Ah, I ended up losing my whole leader and everything, so I just swapped out to a different rod. Um, and I'm gonna try one more time, and then we gotta get the heck out of here. Uh, so let's give this one more quick shot. I really don't want to write uh, write a whole ending about the one that got away, you know, because the, the last video was, if one is good enough, this one will be, you know, <laughs> this one will be the one that got away, the big one. the fishing uh -oh. God, that's a bummer but we still caught one uh, there's only just a little section of that creek right there that's very fishable a lot of uh, private land and stuff up here in this area uh, but yeah I'm completely drenched from head to toe everybody else is sitting in the car and trying to keep warm we still have an hour drive. It's getting to be close to eight o'clock, which is past the, you know, getting close to the legal fishing time anyways. I can't even tell when the sun is setting. I've been in nothing but rain for two days and it's supposed to continue raining in through tomorrow. So uh, yeah, it is what it is, but I hope you enjoyed enjoyed this video. Uh, it's been, been a lot of fun, been a long time, been about three years that that I've wanted to come in here and due to the forest fires and, and, and other other limiting factors I this is the first time I got to come in here and I've been kinda battling weather but uh, yeah I guess I'm who wants to be a fair weather fly fisherman anyways so anyways hope you enjoy we'll see you next time peace